Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. You can come visit my shop here, The Bio Dude Houston, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. or Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And today I'm doing a little bit more of a different type of video. Today I'm gonna briefly talk about a little bit more of amphibian conservation, um, how there is a fungus among us. Uh, and I'm gonna talk about how, what steps we as keepers should be taking uh, to prevent this fungus from spreading, as well as what types of quarantining, testing that we should be doing with all of our amphibians that we have as pets uh, to ensure that we are not intro accidentally introducing this into our native population of amphibians here in the United States, as well as ensuring that our critters here um, in our captive environment are you know, making sure that they are getting the treatment and care that they as a species deserve. Now what you can see behind me, this is my 36 by 18 by 36 Exoterra Chinese gliding frogs. I purchased these frogs about six years ago, give or take, from Sean Harrington, also known as the Frog Whisperer. As you guys know, I have done a lot of business with Sean and I will always recommend Sean. Uh, the, now the fungus that I really want to touch base on today is the chytrid fungus. Now there are two different strains of the chytrid fungus. The first strain, which, in, which infects our poison dart frogs, our tree frogs, and some of our other aquatic species of frogs, which is Bacterium dendrobatus. And then there's the other strain of this fungus called the Bacterium salamandrovirus, which, which honestly mutated more recently ago to affect salamanders and newts and things like that, which is honestly along the whole global aspect of things causing significant decline besides habitat destruction with all of our amphibians as a whole. Now, frogs in the hobby, while they, poison dart frogs are bred on a commercial scale. You, you know, you have multiple different lines of poison dart frogs from breeders bringing them in and performing these different chytrid tests, which are supremely important to the overall well-being of the preservation of the species. But there's a lot of frogs that your flippers get from strictly reptiles or other, you know, Florida importers that they buy them in bulk. They come in a box. Those hate saying flippers, but flippers, put them in a cup, sell them to the consumer. They do no testing, they do no type of deworming, they do nothing. A lot of times these amphibians can carry nasty, nasty parasites and they can be carrying the chytrid fungus being asymptomatic. Now I'm sure you're asking, well, what does asymptomatic mean? And what does the chytrid fungus actually do? So like a virus, funguses can mutate. They can, they can consistently mutate to, train, to change their strains to impact different types of fauna. So what the chytrid fungus does is, the first thing that it's going to do is cause potential lesions on their body, such as red sores that look like bacterial infections. The next step is it starts throwing off their water balance. Now we know that amphibians go through water balance on their skin. It's called osmosis. It's how they take in water and utilize that to help their, uh, the balance their osmotic pressures, which is their overall balance for homeostasis on a whole. So what the chytrid fungus does is it prevents their bodies from being able to properly balance their osmotic pressures. So then what happens is they start losing their water balance. Once their water balance gets, gets impacted, their body starts shutting down as a whole. First, their kidneys will start being not near as operational, which then they will start becoming septic and then they will eventually die. And when I say eventually die, it, it takes about one to three days after symptoms kick in before it's too late. Now, frogs can be carriers of the chytrid fungus for years, but never display any symptoms. All it takes is for one specific type of stimuli to suppress that immune system just enough to have those symptoms come up and then cause that to impact your amphibian. Being a fungus, this is extremely contagious. So let's say I just bought some poison dart. Well, you know what? Let's say I just purchased this Chinese gliding frog, okay? And I just purchased it from a breeder and he, who didn't do any testing or anything like that. Now these guys are already tested. I'm gonna show you guys how to test. But not only did these animals um, get handled and put in many different types of environments that other amphibians are exposed to, they're constantly shedding this fungus off their bodies when they shed their skin. So let's say I decide to feed these guys crickets, okay? The crickets somehow escape out of this enclosure and come over here to my cinnamon tree frog enclosure. 
they will not only introduce that chytrid strain into this, it will impact every single frog in this terrarium and most likely kill them like that. It takes one frog that's positive to wipe out an entire collection of amphibians in days. And it all starts with you being a responsible keeper and knowing what you should do. Now, first I talked about quarantining. I'm gonna show you guys what different quarantine setups can look like, what you can do in those quarantine setups and the steps during quarantining that you should be doing. Now, in my opinion, just like cats and dogs, you know, animals are investments. You know, they are your responsibility, they are your pets and they should be treated no differently. In my opinion, when you have an animal in the quarantining process, not only should they be taken to a vet to get properly dewormed, you know, you should be doing these different tests, the Kitra test for your amphibian to make sure that they aren't carriers and if they are, that you can get treatment. So let's say you, let's say this frog was positive for Kitra and I talked about the, I talked about a cricket getting out. So let's say that I do a non-bio enclosure, okay? Or let's say this piece of moss here dies. And I say, you know what, this moss looks bad. I'm gonna take it out, I'm gonna throw it in the trash. That moss is carrying those spores. One, the moment that this moss hits outside, you just put that chytrid fungus outside. And then guess what's gonna happen to the native fauna, the native amphibians here? They're gonna get it and it's gonna spread. This is a huge problem that's happening globally. And the flippers that are buying these wild caught animals aren't educating the consumer on this risk and they're perpetuating the problem. And it's a big problem. And it's a problem that we as keepers need to step up and fix because in my opinion, that's animal cruelty, in my opinion, and, and it's extremely unethical. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I am gonna be selling Kitra testing kits on my website. So I'm gonna show you guys how to properly swab the environment. I'm gonna show you guys how to fill out the form, what website to go to, the cost, and then I'm gonna show you guys a proper quarantine setup. So going back to the Frog Whisperer, he tests all of his amphibians before he even makes them available. He deworms them, he tests them, and puts them through a full quarantine stage before even being released to the public. If you are at a reptile show and there's a person selling a red-eyed tree frog for $25, that frog is straight out of Panama or, 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 or Nicaragua. You know, your first question to that person should be, did you test these frogs for chytrid? Because you have a 50% chance of those frogs having that fungus. So what I have in front of me here is a sterile swab. It's 100% sterile. It's very, very important that you follow aseptic technique when you're doing this, meaning don't touch it with your hands. As you can see, I'm wearing blue nitrile gloves, so I'm gonna open this up like this. Now this is, the tube in which we're going to ship it in okay you can get these at any vet hospital but again i'm going to be offering them on my website real soon we then have a sterile swab now it means exactly how it sounds it's completely sterile you don't want to touch it you don't want to sneeze on it you want to make sure that what you're swabbing is only what you're going to want to get so then what we do is we are going to swab the environment and we're going to swab the amphibians themselves so let's go over here. So I got, I got these bad boys right here. We're just gonna, yeah, I know. What am I doing to you? Yeah, they hate it. You okay. wanna make sure you, you get around the black of the back. And you wanna make sure that you test every, almost every single specimen in the enclosure. Okay, so let me, come on, go. There we go, oh gosh, I know. What am I doing to you? They hate this, okay. Got another one up here. He was sleeping. Yeah, I should put you in here. Here we go. Look, look at the fatness. I love it. Yeah, okay. Next, I'm going to do a very light swab in the environment. So, as you can see here, the top of it is a little dirty, okay? But they're looking for DNA, okay? This, this test looks for DNA. Deoxyrub de, uh, de, deoxyrubose nucleic acid. Something like that, okay. And again, this might seem a little ridiculous that I'm like, oh, it's a sterile swab. And here we are rubbing it all over the environment, but this is exactly how we get a positive or negative test. The chytrid fungus can last, can honestly survive in almost any climate. Um, it can be, it can be neg in the negatives outside and in the moment it warms up, it'll still be there. So I got a really decent swab. Let me get the water bowl. 
and I'm gonna get here, get the this. Okay. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this swab and I'm gonna put it right in here. Right like this. So it, it went and snapped in. Okay. I'm gonna break off this over here. So I'm just going to put that right there for right now. Okay, let me get my computer booted up here. So the website you're going to go to, are you picking it up clearly? You go to vetdna.com, which is Research Associates Laboratory in Dallas, Texas. It's going to take you right to this home screen. You click on reptile and amphibian, right like that. It's loading, okay. Then it says reptile and amphibian submittal form, PDF. Click on that. And then you're gonna print this out. And this is exactly what this is right here. Now it's really straightforward. We take the form and you put in your information here, your information about the animal, swab. And if you're sending a check or credit card, then, as you can see, it says DNA test, $20 each. So this covers, each test is gonna be each individually $20. You can test for yellow fungus, which is big time issue with bearded dragons, ranavirus, chytrid fungus. So I'm testing for chytrid and rana. If your amphibians come up positive for rana, the only thing that you can do is unfortunately euthanize them. However, uh, the chytrid fungus is treatable. Now, if you are testing for salamanders, you can see it right there, B salamandra virus, B dendrobatus. The one that we're testing for is B dendrobatus. So you can see I have that highlighted with the X. Then what we're gonna do is you're gonna take this with your swab. And again, I already tested these guys, so that's why I, I didn't put it in all the way. So let's say this is the, this is the completed swab. You're gonna take this paper with your swab this is a FedEx Express envelope. You can get these at any Walgreens, Staples, Office Depot for free. It's cost two. It's a two-day guaranteed time, and it costs fourteen dollars and ninety-five cents to ship, plus the cost of the test. You simply put the swab with this information in here. If you have, if you're testing multiple animals, you want to make sure that the swab is attached to each paper. So that way there's no confusion. You put it in here, seal it up, and ship it off. It's that easy. You'll get a response via email in a couple days letting you know if we're positive or negative. Now, if we come up positive, your first call is to a reptile veterinarian to get treatment, which means your entire terrarium over here, if they come up positive, you have to pitch everything. And when I say you have to pitch everything, everything's gotta go. Then I'm sure your next question is, well, what am I supposed to do with all this stuff? If it's going to infest, infest my environment, how do I prevent it from doing so? I would put all of this in a plastic bag. Not only would I burn the wood, I would dump bleach water into that bag and make sure that all of this is covered in bleach to try and disinfect this environment, this environment before I put it outside in the trash as much as possible. There's only so much that you can do to prevent it from, if you come up with a positive animal, to get rid of this stuff in the best way that you can. But what I can tell you, the, the number one way to prevent it is to be educated as to whom you're buying your amphibians from. Look at the price, ask them, where did you get this frog? Are you testing for chytrid? Or if you bought it from somebody else, are they testing for chytrid? If they say yes, okay, can I please see a copy of the results? You know, if you come across a frog that's a lot cheaper than what it's supposed to be, or if it's an import, it's very, very important that we follow these steps. So let's go over here to potential quarantining options. So I like to quarantine my amphibians for 30 days. Now during that time, not only will they get de dewormed with, with, a, with a panicure in Metro, um, I will also do that Kitra test. And then and only then will they even come anywhere near this room. I have a full quarantining room at my house 
that I actually have a trio of dart frogs at right now. And the moment they come out of quarantine, I'll be showing you a really sick dart frog how-to video with Chase of Houston frogs, which I'm really excited about. So the first quarantining enclosure that I want to tell you is for young dart frogs. Now, when I say young dart frogs, I mean dart frogs that are the size of your thumbnail. Young, 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 tiny frogs. This is a 128 ounce deli cup container. In here, I have a layer of moist sphagnum moss with some cork bark and leaf litter. I am going to miss this enclosure every single day and I'm going to feed these frogs every single day. It's imperative if you're going to keep them in something, excuse me, in something like this, that not only are you checking on them daily, that you're making sure that, you know, that, that, that they're able to thrive in here for the short period that they're going to be in here. This is not acceptable for large dart frogs. This is not acceptable for tree frogs. But for young dart frogs, this is perfect. And then what you do, <clears throat> excuse me guys, I've been recovering from the flu. <clears throat> you take your, your springtail culture, you go like this. You take that entire culture, you dump it in at the bottom, right like that. Boom. Now there's a whole lot of springtails for your young dart frogs in this quarantined environment. After, you, after um, and as you're deworming them, what you can do is as you're consistently replacing the moss, the, the springtails are going to be attaching to the cork bark. So as you have to replace the moss, you will always have replacement springtails on your leaves. You will always have replacement springtails on your cork bark. So even though you're gonna be disinfecting this, in this tub, even though you're going to be working, uh, pulling everything out, you can still salvage that springtail population each cleaning. Now, as far as cleaning agents, there's a couple things that you can use. You can use a very diluted 5% bleach solution, but you wanna make sure there's absolutely no bleach residual. You can use an F10 veterinary disinfectant cleaner, uh, which works extremely well. Or you can use Blue Dawn dish soap that diluted about 15%. You again, just wanna make sure that you are properly making sure there's no residuals left. Now, let me show you another type of quarantining enclosure that I like to do. So for me at the BioDude Houston, I have so many baby red eyes, <coughs> excuse me, that are morphing out on a weekly basis. So, and able to make sure that my red eyes are staying healthy, I keep them in a, as a clean of a position uh, as possible because so many new frogs are going in, so many frogs are going out. This can be said for when you're quarantining. So this is a 12 by 12 by 24 enclosure. So if you purchase a dumpy tree frog, this is an ideal quarantining enclosure. If you purchase a red eye tree frog, this is an ideal quarantining enclosure. You could even go with a 12 by 12 by 18 or a 10 gallon tank, whatever you wanna do. Down here at the base, I'm utilizing AAA sphagnum moss, which I am replacing every couple days. I am then use a water bowl with a plant that is still in the pot, that not only do I disinfect the outside of the pot, we also make sure that we're always disinfecting that water bowl. The frogs are pulled out every couple days with gloves to do a visual inspection and to thoroughly disinfect this entire tank. Now, when I say disinfect, we pull everything out. We pull the plant out, we pull the water bowl out, we pull all the frogs out and we spray it with Blue Dawn and we scrub it. We hose it out, dry it, rinse it off again, reset up the moss and get the frogs back in there. We, I will do that for a total of 30 days during the quarantining process. I will feed them as normal. I will give them their, their husbandry for when it comes to heat and UVB as normal. But I am going to make sure that as they are being dewormed, that, that, that the feces are gone so they can't reinfest themselves. I am making sure that that Kitra test comes up negative so they can't spread it to my collection. And I'm sure a lot of you are asking me, well, bio dude, you know, if I'm afraid that my frog might have chytrid, but I'm still waiting on the, on the test results, what am I supposed to do if when, when it's set up like this when I have to throw away my sphagnum moss? And the answer to that is put the sphagnum moss in a bag, don't bleach on it, just as a precaution. And I know it seems like a stretch that taking all of these steps for a frog that costs $25, but it isn't about the cost, it isn't about the, it, 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 it's not about the cost, it's not about you know, what, we sh what we think we should be doing. It's about co conserving our 
at our frogs here in the United States to prevent this fungus from spreading. It's about providing the best care for our animals to make sure that they get the chance that they need to thrive in a captive environment because we have to remember they are wild animals. They are not domesticated in any way, so it's very important that when we introduce them into our own, own setup, that they are clean and good to go because the last thing that you guys want is you spend top dollar on a setup, okay? Top dollar. You spend, you get money on the frog, you take the frog home, you put it in a new environment that it's not used to at all. That stresses the frog out. That suppresses its immune system just enough for that chytrid fungus to be like, hi, you're dead. And then just like that, not only are you out on your investment in that enclosure, you know, a life was lost, which is not what we want as keepers, as reptiles. Remember guys, it is about, you know, keeping them using, you, it's about keeping them, you know, the best way possible, you, utilizing your research driven practices and techniques. And of course, if you guys have any questions about, you know, why we need to quarantine, why it's important to quarantine, or what questions should I be asking vendors that have multiple amphibians on their table? You know, PM us, we're here to help you. You know, another option is paper towels. I hate paper towels. I, you, I, I am the last dude that you wanna ask about using paper towels in a setup. But <coughs> if you are deworming your frogs, if you are misting them every day, if you are changing them out every day, you are giving them the care and attention that they need during that period, you have nothing to worry about using paper towels. But if you are gonna try using paper towels and just forget about them for three days, you will fail. Because those humidity spikes, especially when they're going through those deworming periods and all of those different stressful situations, it is so important to make sure that we are providing them that perfect level of husbandry before we get them fully established in their permanent home. And again, guys, my name is Josh Halter. I am the owner and founder of The Bio Dude. Um, and again, uh, if you guys have any questions about this, please don't hesitate to ask me. And again, the, as far as the swab goes, uh, my kits are always going to include, are always going to include the swab and, the, and this piece right here. And again, the only reason I didn't break this off, this top part where, where, where you see the, the, the dotted line, you snap it and you push it in, okay? I just wanted to show you guys how, how to do it. And again, uh, any questions, guys, message us. If you're not sure what type of quarantine enclosure you need for your frogs, message us. We're here to help you. Please come visit my store Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Thank you all for, for your support. I really appreciate it. The dude abides.